Greetings. Welcome back to Black Bear News, where we are discussing climate change, abrupt climate change, and things adjacent. And if you are tuning in, you are probably smarter than the average bear. Today is September 20th, uh, the start of a global climate strikes. Uh, please, if you can, or if you have, hopefully you remembered to honor the Friday gas strike. Uh, but hopefully all of you got the message. Uh, quite a few of you uh checked going on the Facebook event page and thank you for all the shares and all the, um, all the likes and whatnot. Um, I am quite encouraged by the amount of support for the Friday gas strike. I am honoring the strike today myself. I'm urging all the people around me to do the same. Uh, this will continue every single Friday, uh, until whenever. Um, the event, actually on the Facebook event, I marked it until October 4th, which is uh, a few weeks from now. So that particular event will go, will continue. Um, I don't know if I could change the date or not, but I'll try. what I'll try to do is make just kind of like a, it's a, you know, uh, a separate standalone page for the Friday gas strike. And then we can just all kind of converge there. Uh, when will I do this? I don't know. Soon. But again, thank you for participating. I appreciate you. Um, there are things going on. There's a climate strike in, in Pershing Square today uh, in L.A. From noon to 3.30. That will probably already be, be passed uh, by the time you see this video. Um Anyways, let me, let me, I'm going to cover a few things today. Um, this is from a few, this is from June 9th, 2019. And I don't know if you're going to get anything out of this article, but you know, read it anyways. It's somebody's take on Greta Thunberg. Greta Thunberg's climate panic has our attention. Now what? Um, Hamburg, Ger Germany. The most telling words about a country are often those that are impossible to translate. In the case of Germany, one such word is Zweck, Zweck pessimismus. It means roughly pessimism on purpose. The attitude of expecting the worst in order to be able to feel relief when the worst, oh, lucky us, does not occur. Uh, people displaying Zweck pessimismus are often annoying. They tend to ruin others' people's fun with their what can go wrong, what will go wrong, or what can go wrong will go wrong posture. But Zweck pessimists mostly have a point, like parents warning children against stupid behavior. This past year, it was the other way around. The Fridays for the Future movement, which is stalked and led by young people, is defined by pessimism on purpose toward older generations in the role in driving climate change. Emerging, emerging a year ago, from the protests of a Swedish teenager, Greta Thunberg, Fridays for Future, and its vociferous warnings of an imminent eco-apocalypse has swept across northern Europe and is particularly strong in Germany. In June, 500 students linked arms around the Reichstag in an attempt to block legislators from exiting for their summer recess. It is as easy as it is wrongheaded to ridicule the government. Uh, okay. The young... The young have not only the right to be morally rigorous, but the duty. Uh, with age comes intellectual routine, and with intellectual routine comes complacency and operational blindness. It often takes a newcomer's sense of astonishment to see and break a society's psychological and social deadlocks, be it the anti-war marches in Washington half a century ago or the climate strikes in Stockholm and Berlin today. As a member of an older generation, I am thankful for this new youthful energy. But at the risk of coming across as a lecturing parent, oh, here, here it comes. I also have some advice. Zweck pessimists, uh, Zweck pessimists, uh, Zweck pessimismus, that, there we go, only goes so far. We need optimism too. Oh, do we? Otherwise, your steady calls of alarm risk becoming a complacent routine in itself. At least in Germany, the message for Fridays for Future has been received and understood. 
There is no serious political party, no responsible company today that has not recently made climate a priority. But there's no doubt the movement played a role in that sea change. <clears throat> Lack of awareness is no longer the problem. Um, Germany's real problem, which stands in the way of real change, is deeper. The lack of trust in the power of human spirit and technology is precisely where the young must apply their next push and where they require a push themselves. Societies need morally rigorous young people, but they also need young people willing to take risks and reach for the impossible. Ms. Thunberg has urged the world to panic, but unchecked fear can itself be paralyzing, creating a rising generation convinced that action is pointless. Pessimism afflicts more than just the young, of course. In April, researchers from the renowned Allensbach Institute published a devastating report showing that the percentage of Germans who believe in progress has reached a five-decade low. Asked if they thought that humanity is headed toward a better future, only 32% responded that, that yes, they believed in progress. A staggering 39% said that scientific research that carried even a minor risk for humans should be prohibited. These are smart people. <laughs> this is amazing. If Germans discovered fire tomorrow, more than a third of us would rush, rush to stomp it out, this frightening new source of heat and light. It might burn us. Uh, yeah, but you're, you're kind of, yeah, anyways. There's more. Over the last two years, the number of annual startups in Germany has decreased by 100,000. Sarna Roser, the head of an association of young entrepreneurs, says her peers are having trouble finding German venture capital. Germans are definitely becoming more risk averse. Ms. Roser told me, if Germans all of all ages are growing pessimistic, then it is all the more important that the youngest among us move the youngest among us move beyond panic to provide constructive visions and solutions. Young Germans need to consider this. Do they really do they want to live in a country that is bypassed by investors or lose loses track of technological advances in climate change? Or do they envision a Germany that uses its wealth and intellectual potential to become a front runner in the effort, efforts to take on climate change with whatever means human genius can produce? Hydrogen powered aircraft and zero emission cars may have sounded like science fiction a decade ago. Today they appear as serious options, but making them a reality will take investment, research, risk taking, and above all, optimism. Not only not to mention all the resources it will take and uh, carbon emissions it will take to build those things. So they should be risk averse. This is actually wisdom, not pessimism or not risk aversion. It's wisdom. It's called wisdom. Something that we have been severely lacking in the 20th and into the 21st century. Because we just go forward with whatever humans can create. Um, consequences be damned. Anyways, that's the end of that article. I don't know if you all enjoyed that or not. And lastly, in this video, I wanted to, um, it's interesting. There, there's a few, I've, I've run across a few interesting videos on the old Facebook and I appreciate, I, I follow a few climate change groups and, um, getting interesting content. Anyways, this is Jordan Peterson on climate change and climate policy at, at the Cambridge Union. Um, you know, if you all don't know who Jordan Peterson is, he's a um, sociologist. I, I think he has some interesting things to say about some things. That, you know, some people on uh, the left, you know, think he's a total Nazi or, you know, hates um Anybody, uh, he, he talks about, um, what is it? Cultural communism, you know, uh, whatever people on the left, LGBTQ and, uh, people who are involved in social justice movements and, and identity politics and stuff like that. He, he kind of has, um, you know, a negative view of all that all that stuff, uh, you know, some of the stuff he says, I don't agree with, um, or I find it, you know, not necessarily to my liking. Some of the stuff he says about other things I, I find very interesting. And he also cites a lot of, um, factual scientific studies, you know, whatever, um, in his work, which I also, you know, there's some interesting things that he says. I think, you know, I think he's, He's a mixed bag like most people are. Anyways, and I thought this was interesting because he 
he understands that climate change is real. I'm not going to play any of this video. I'm going to link it below so you can watch it. But he understands that climate change is real. He understands that it's a big, fat mess. And he also basically says, no way do we do anything about climate change. He just thinks he thinks people are too splintered politically and culturally. He says there's just no way to get um, consensus you know, or, or a political movement behind something that will actually change. Climate change, um, which, you know, is, it's, he's pretty blunt. He's totally blunt. He's like, no, no way we do that. Um, I, you know, I don't know if I agree with this or not. It's, but it's an interesting take. Um, I think obviously, yes, in order to do something about climate change, we're going to have to have some kind of consensus. Um, I believe that consensus is possible. Uh, it just takes, it takes information. It also takes not having a, not having a corporate controlled media apparatus. Um, you know, what we need to do is, is greatly limit the power of corporations. We need to beat them back with a big old reality stick. And, you know, corporations are, you know, ruining our planet and ruining our lives. They are evil. They are bad. And, you know, we need to we need to beat them back enough so that people can actually get real information on on a daily basis. And then we can start to, you know, look at that information in reality and form, you know, paths forward based on real information. Do I see the likelihood of that happening? Uh, it's probably a very, very small percentage that I believe in the likelihood of that happening, but you know, try, we must, and that's why I'm here. That's why so many others are doing the same work. That's why, uh, extinction rebellion is there. That's why Greta, Greta Thunberg is there. That's why people are shouting as loudly as they can and writing articles and discussing this in order to change the current paradigm. And with that, I will let you I'll let the wild parrots sing you out of this video. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for your eyes, your ears, and your conscience. If you would like to support this channel, you can do so at the links below. Until next time, peace.